In the middle of the cornfields of central Illinois sits one of the world's great universities. Here there is a unique institution that is dedicated to the teaching and promotion of Japanese art and culture. It is Japan House. I've been associated with Japan House in one way or another for its whole existence for 30 years. There are a number of program areas uh, offered here. Uh, there are, of course, formal courses, uh, but the topics include uh, tea ceremony around which the house is really built, uh, but also flower arranging, Japanese sweet making, kimono dressing, calligraphy, black ink drawing, through traditional Japanese art, I do hope that students learn, although it's an old traditional art, but still it's lots of um, things that they can apply to the life, so, such as in a, a tea ceremony, uh, we put lots of uh, emphasis on kokoro ire, which kokoro is heart, uh, can be translated soul, mind, uh, spirit. So whatever you do, put whole heart into it. Japan House has been designed to create an inviting and authentic atmosphere to achieve the goal of sharing Japanese culture. Formal, semi-formal, and informal rooms were created by Japanese craftsmen using techniques and materials that are authentic in every detail. The informal room would be the four and a half mat tea room, which is, is supposed to uh, replicate a rustic uh, farmhouse and such and the materials that are used within that room although refined are supposed to emulate that space and then we have the semi-formal room and the semi-formal room changes its materials just ever so slightly um, from the actually from the formal room um, the surface is not completely smooth but still has a texture on it and such and then once you get into the formal room then all the materials are extremely refined and the, the choice of wood has no sense of nature anymore. Maybe it's, it's, it's much more of a higher sense of architecture. Japan House is fortunate to enjoy not only a beautiful building, but also an extensive collection of tea utensils and artworks. This collection not only enhances the study of tea, but also provides the furnishings that are the authentic complement to the austere beauty of the rooms. The Tokonoma is a display alcove and uh, it has different art objects in it and so every time we would come and visit there would, there would be change and be something new. And so some of the objects would include a flower arrangement, a hanging scroll, uh, an incense container and these objects are placed in this beautiful composition that it's, it's awesomely simple because it has the harmony and the balance and, and I think that really it, it let us come in, look at it and observe and, and just really we had to take the time and um, like think about what was it trying to tell us or what were they going to show. And the informal room also has a special feature called the Nijiri Guchi. The small entrance is not so small, but it's just low so that each and every one of us has to stoop to enter this tea room. It's not so much about who you are or what your position in life is or your rank or title, but it's, it's about being a human and coming in to have tea. An integral part of Japan House is the gardens that surround it, allowing a seamless flow between the natural world outside into the inner rooms. Unlike the rooms created entirely by Japanese craftsmen, the garden is a work of an American designer using traditional Japanese design principles. Well, tea gardens are built in two sections. There's an outer garden and an inner garden. And the outer garden usually is something that is a transition zone between uh, uh, a more structured lifestyle, like it might be an urban life. Coming in, it, the bushes are designed so that they're uh, tightly pruned and uh, more evergreen, but as you go through this gate here, 
uh, you will uh, go into an inner garden, which we're standing in now, and the inner garden is more uh, deciduous, not so much evergreen, and the idea generally is that you're leaving the structured environment going into a more wilderness setting. The garden is designed to take you through, through a path that's a little bit uneven and a little bit um, uh, uh, askew. Um, there are details everywhere that draw you in. Um, the, the, the stones are uneven so that you have to be mindful of your step, that you need to be careful of where you walk. And then you pause at the sukubai, which is the water basin, and you wash your hands, and you wash your mouth, and you purify your heart, and you enter the, the tea house, really having left the outside world at the outside gate. At the heart of the Japan House program is a practice of the tea ceremony. Tea ceremony is a discipline that is spiritual, social, and artistic. For many, it is considered to be the epitome of all the arts of Japan. There is an old saying that the study of tea takes a whole lifetime. You might also say that it is the study of life. I find it hard to categorize my study of the tea ceremony as serious. Um, if it was serious, I probably wouldn't be doing it because it's always a joy to me to come to tea ceremony, come to tea class and learn something new. Um, it's fun, the people are supportive, not just the teachers, which are superbly supportive, but also all the students. Everyone is here to learn, is here to find something new. I take something away from the tea ceremony that pleases me, and I try to give it back to them. I try to present them with something I think they can warm up to a person that doesn't necessarily belong in this sort of environment. You might look at the two sides of, of, of what I do, one being a, a geologist and, and two being a, a tea practitioner as uh, completely different things. And, um, and I think when I started studying tea that maybe they were. And then um, what I have discovered over the years is that my study of tea ceremony as my art form has really become a reflection of my science and my science has become a reflection of, of the art form. All of your senses just come alive. You smell the incense. Uh, you notice the textures of the tatami mats. And if you're having tea, the beauty of the pottery, and you can actually feel that. And then you taste the tea and uh, I, you hear the silences, that to me is when you come from a very wired technical world and there's noise all the time, you come in here and you can actually maybe hear the water, you can hear it bubbling, you might hear uh, the little spring outside or the rustle of a leaf. And I think that quiets all our souls and we hunger for that. Zen Buddhism teaches the importance of a consciousness of our human existence and the goal of being totally present in this moment. This idea can be expressed in one sentence. Ichi go ichi e. Ichi is one, go is life, and then ichi again, so that's one, and then e is meeting. So one life, one meeting, one life, one opportunity. To me, I do tea ceremony maybe I have done several thousand times maybe, but every time is different. Like, so like I feel like oh, this is it, then I like to do the best I, I know, the best, most sincere way. If you put all heart into it and thinking about this opportunity come only once in, in my lifetime, in your lifetime, that ordinary thing, things become extraordinary, even elevated into great art for. Thank you for spending these few minutes with us at Japan House. We hope that you will return here again and again to experience our house, our gardens, tea, and our kokoro. Whether you visit us once or many times, we hope that you will take away a message of peace into your own life. For further information about events and programs at Japan House, please visit our website.